was disappointing after that game. Disappointing because we went in there intending to win, thought we'd play well. Um, we didn't, but but you could just feel the understanding of the team. Where okay, we got to quickly reset and put that one behind us. That was one of those games that um, man, just we couldn't get things going our way, and and you got to put it behind us. It's not indicative of who we're going to be the rest of the season, and go get a chance to grab some momentum here at the end of this week. Wow. Yeah. What a bummer of an intro. Yeah, it's almost like I didn't hear anything. I'm very bummed. Yeah, the, that downer. Downer, yeah. downer, downer. Which is, which is really how we all feel right now. Pretty down. Down and out. I, in, I feel all right. You guys, yeah. you guys sad? I am. The Bengals look so bad. I mean, I'm in yeah, a really... Just the Bengals. I'm in a really depressing location, so... Looks yeah. like it. Boo-hoo, boo-hoo. Bridget, you look like you're about to meet, like... Um, someone on like a secret assignment and you have to sit like five feet away from them so it doesn't look like you're associating with them. I, I mean, I don't know if anyone's reached out about Daddy-O's activity and maybe just a... I can't yeah, confirm or deny. Offshore accounts, obviously, there is supposed to be able to be handled remotely, but every once in a while you need someone to follow up. Kind of uh, intimidation. But... Well, if I might... The Bengals podcast. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I, uh, I I have some complaints to make to HR about that deal. Please, this is yeah. the perfect forum for that. Well, well, I just want to remind people what this podcast is. It is we are going to talk about Cincinnati Bengals. Well, before we do, though, rounds. before we do, I mean, I feel like Dadio has been doing some microaggressions with some suggestive language in company emails and as well as in meetings. Suggestive language is a microaggression. Yeah, micro assault well, even. He is he small, not so. To use well, explicit may, language. Well, may I give? May I? May I please, Bridget? Yeah. Bridget, may I give some examples? Okay, these are all from company emails, beating around the bush. Right. Taking the bull I, by the horns. Hitting the nail on the head. These are all from company emails written by Daddyo. Does he kiss his mother with that mouth? Yeah. Oh, hold on. Here's the rub. Cut the mustard and three thumbs up. Now, me personally, I wouldn't let that slide. No. No, the no. last one is unacceptable. He sent one to me about uh, killing two birds with one stone. And I was okay, like, we are that's, not. That's out. Yeah, we that's, are not a violent. No. We feed no. two birds with one seed. Yes, with one hand. Yes. Yeah. Welcome to the number one Bengals podcast. Obviously, we have a podcast to talk about, and we have the Bengals to talk about. And you can find us on all the podcasting Bengal networks. We are on Believe. We are on YouTube and everywhere else. And obviously, I don't know if you heard, but we are on the best of Believe, which is pretty impressive. They have a lot of Hall of Famers on there. They have some great players, you yeah. know, Deshaun Jackson, Bill Poldy, and lots of famous people. And we were the best. And so the best of the yeah, best. We were the best. Yeah. Number and one. Today, John, we are talking about Cincinnati Bengals, who obviously have the best possible roster that they could have, as we learned uh, no. from Zach Taylor's comments with the media. And he explained that very briefly. You're aware, you've seen some of the transactions that happen around the league, but I don't have any theories because I just focus on our roster and getting ready for this game. Am I supposed to be seeing something coach, on the screen? Is there a it's audio. No. Okay, guys in the locker room, maybe say, okay, my team didn't make a move. Do you have to address that? Like, no. Is there a message no. that is sent with that? I, I think our team feels, feels very comfortable with the type of team that we have. And, um, again, they do such a great job of just taking it week to week. And, and you could feel it even in the locker room. Yeah, so there you have it. We are very comfortable with our team, and this is a team. Well, as he should that, be. Yeah. I mean, what would they I have? Mean, done? No, no. Here's here's the thing. I want to ask Bengals Twitter. What would you have done exactly? Who would you have gotten exactly? Don't give me a general. We need a CB. We need an RB. We need this. What right. exactly would you have done? Because that's how it works. At this yeah. stage in trading, you have you can't just grab someone. You can't just like okay, I'm gonna take Kareem Hunt. 
Kareem Hunt comes with a contract. You have to have a plan in place. And then you have to, you know, do something else with someone else's contract. Everything is very difficult. So you tell me exactly what you would have done at this point. I, I don't like losing either. But you can't no. just simply say, oh, we got to do something. That's not how it works in the professional. That is a good point. That yeah. is a good point. But I would say this, that they have about two to three of Mike Brown's nephews who that is their full-time job. So, I mean, I- I was gonna say the job. same thing. Yeah. I don't like agreeing with daddy. That usually means maybe I'm wrong, but I feel like mm -hmm. it's not our job. As far as I know, Bengals don't pay me to figure out the business end. I, I don't know exactly what the move would have been, but I think just to say like, oh, there's a lot of paperwork involved doesn't mean that you don't try. Well, can I, can, I, can, can I talk about the position that everybody has been saying the Bengals should have made the move on, but I think we're perfectly fine on, and that's the secondary. Why? Why do we need to bring in someone this late in the season in a, in a hurried, higgly-piggly kind of way? Well, because... Why? okay, The so secondary is fine. The secondary hasn't been underperforming that year. The well, secondary... Okay, so the secondary has been good because they've been able to get by without a great cornerback number two right now they've lost their shutdown cornerback number one their cornerback two is was a struggling coming back from injury i believe john right and now we have we had a rookie out there who hasn't shown that he can be consistent yet and so we go from having an average let's say cornerback a starting tandem to probably, John, one of the most inexperienced in the league. I wouldn't say average. I feel like when you put all three of them together, you know, with the Wuzier, Hilden, and then Apple, like, I feel like that's above average just because of how well Wuzier was playing, but he's hurt. He's not coming back until, what, August of next year? That torn ACL is no joke, even for a guy who's young and athletic as he is. So without him, you have... Eli Apple coming back from a hamstring injury, and even before that hamstring injury, he was barely playing at a starter's level. That's why they were trying to integrate T Taylor Britt into his spot there. So now without a Wuzier, you have a recovering Eli Apple with Taylor Britt, who's still learning the ropes. He's still working through his own mistakes. He did not play that well against Cleveland. It's a huge liability, and you have a lot of great quarterbacks on this end of the schedule going up against that secondary it doesn't matter how good your safeties are. If your cornerbacks can't match up in one-on-one -on -one and pass off those coverages like Awuzie was so apt of doing with Jesse Bates, like that was something that we noticed against the Browns. There was a play down the field where Taylor Britt and Bates were carrying the same round and someone didn't pass it off to the crosser, ended up wide open. It was one of the many explosive plays that the Browns, the Browns of all teams, were able to generate with their passing game against the Bengals is because their secondary is very weak. Yeah. So, I mean, why did it look like to the to the average viewer to the uninformed viewer that we were just getting beat on the run all the time that it was I mean, chubbs chubbs was just chubbing well, down the no, line Marty chubb, Cooper chubb, chubb, had chubb, 130 chubb. yards i mean he was getting big plays the whole game and feel, really, i felt like chubbs was team, really kidding us well he way. always does i mean yeah. i told you that they would their offensive yeah. line esteem rolls us he had some great blocking for sure yeah but uh, look here's the thing that game is in the past it was a disaster we were not mentally prepared. You can't move on beyond it that quickly, though. Okay. Uh, we, no, have to, we have okay. to linger a little bit. Well, yeah, Bridget, let's, Bridget. let's just look at some of the clips. No, Bridget's got something to say. Bridget. Well, depending on what the clips are, Daddy, since you don't share anything with us and are a really okay. horrible communicator, I wanted to talk about the offensive line. Yeah. So here, Burrow, you know, he, he navigates the poor blocking of the offensive line. That was one of his passes. And here's his other pass of the game. And so you see, look, he puts all that in there. That, that was good blocking. That, that was good blocking. And the bad pass. So I don't, yeah, that, those were the two clips we had. And uh, obviously, well, there was this too, where we have uh, this beautiful, beautiful. That was a great I, pass. I actually, I thought for a second, Jamar Chase was back on yeah. that play, John. No, it was a great pass. He got it right in the right great spot. Great catch too, John. Very, it's very. Koji. Yeah. It was a great throw. It was a back shoulder perfectly placed because it was well covered. Like Chris Evans didn't separate from that cornerback at all, but it was a great throw in communication and timing between yeah, him throw. and Burrow. And, yeah. and Zach Taylor was pumped about it. He was asked about, you know, Chris Evans, and this is what he had to say. Okay. Um, you know, he, he serves a role for us, you know, on special teams and in some of the things that he does on offense. So there you go. I, I love a, the way that man talks. Yeah. Am I the only one who finds his voice soothing? He's got that little yeah. whistly S. 
It is. And he's but got I that mean, little grainy, like, like he, we got to have him on the show, Daddy. Yeah. Can, but John, can you get Bridget's he's thoughts he's a, on the offensive line? Because yeah. I feel like she was going Bridget somewhere. Bridget was going to say something. Yeah, Bridget. I, you you got to finish your sentences. Go ahead. I am in a life sentence with this show um, that I don't know if it'll ever be. Too finished. many irons in the fire. <laughs> so I want to talk about Lel Collins and Jonah Wilson. Jonah Williams. What's his name? Jonah. Williams. Fuck. Williams. Uh, Williams. Jonah Williams. What their ratings were pretty low. Uh, someone commented on Jonah on my Twitter that said he looked like a turnstile. Um, so John, what's your take on on Jonah and Lel? Because Lel's been up and down. He was hotter in New Orleans. Didn't look so great last night. Jonah's been kind of up and down. What's your take? I think Lel is just, he is who he is right now just because he's battling through injuries. And I don't think that's going to get necessarily better as the season goes on. I think it's just something that they have to accept. With Jonah, I think my buddy Nick Grayson put it well. You can follow him on Twitter at Nick Grayson on Twitter. When Jonah loses, he loses loud. And I'm not talking like loud like someone yelling. I'm talking about loud like an orchestra playing in like the most perfectly acoustic environment. His losses are catastrophically bad. It's why he's given up now the most sacks out of any starting tackle in the NFL, but he doesn't lose as often as the perception is. It's just that when he does lose, it does end up becoming a sack. It becomes a sack that, unfortunately, Burrow can't really escape from. It's from his blind side. So that's what happened in this game. Jonah Williams gave up three of Burrow's five sacks. I believe Mixon gave up one. And I feel like it's unfair when one player plays as bad as he did or had the losses as bad as he had that the entire offensive line gets thrown under the bus. Three of their yep. five offensive linemen played really, really well. Yep. The interior trio of Cordo Volson, Ted Karras, and Alex Kappa played phenomenal. Now, Preach the Cleveland on. Browns don't have a great defensive tackles and whatnot, but the, the offensive line is not that big of a concern as people make with the five sacks just because 50% of Burroughs' pressures ended up being sacks because of mainly just one player. Well, yeah. John, can I, mean, I, can I just comment? Can, can, can I just, can I just on, comment? John, John, the tackles... I mean, that is, come on, that is what's the, the most important passion. part. Yeah. yeah. I, I know. So I'm I mean, not saying it's not a problem. Like, so I'm saying, saying we had no, the, two, the entire yeah. offensive line gets grouped into this, and it's not yeah. fair. No, no, no. It's no, discrimination. John. I mean, no, but, uh, but, but, and, well, and they're no. all blamed. They're all being blamed for basically someone who we should be it's calling Melo Jello. Okay. That should be his name, Melo Jello. That's what I call him because he's like a piece of Jello. John. He's so Jello-y. John. He's like a fluffy Jello. Is this, is this because of his arms? His short yes. arms. John. Yes, and small hands. We've been saying it because, all year. Yeah. And, 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 he and seems to can whiff I just, a lot. Yeah. Can I just, you know, I mean, look, Jonah. If you ever want to come on the show, you are more than yeah. welcome. We love you. We love all the Bengals offensive line. We love all the players. But he's got to be fired. He's got to be cut immediately. And, and let the backup, let someone else take over. Because he's been given every chance he can. So let me get this straight. You are a big Jonah Williams fan. Big. You just think that he should be out of a job. Cut. Seems okay. fair to me. And then so kicked out of the me, NFL. Let me, John, let me, let me move on to this. Yeah. John, let me move on to this. Jamar Chase, he's injured. He broke his hip. He's in a wheelchair now, they said. He probably would be able to walk. He probably will. They say he is playing video games now, right? Which is a, a sign that you've kind of given up on life, I, I, from what I understand. And We have a lot but of gamers they say watching. He could, right. John, here's the thing. T. Higgins was open a few times, was being held, very obviously being held. And I don't want to complain about the refs. I mean, we, we, got, we were not ready for that game. No, Bengals always blame but, the refs. Right. But T. Higgins was still getting open deep. Yeah. You know, Tyler Boyd, I feel like, suffers more with Jamar Chase out. He's, he isn't just allowed to roam free in the middle of the field. But no. we had other guys step up. Yeah. Obviously, all year, Burrow has been developing chemistry with his tight end, Mr. Hayden Hurst, as we see here. He just found that little a spot in the middle of the field. And then we saw with Irvin here, we saw Burrow kind of move around the pocket. And uh, there you go. John, do they have enough to have a functional offense with these guys? Because they don't, look, they, what they are missing is a speedster. They're not just missing Jamar Chase's production, his gravity, all that stuff. They're also missing a, a speedster, a guy who, who has a speed and can be on the field for let's say half of the offensive snaps. I think it really comes down to being creative of T because 
in the beginning of the season when Jamar wasn't as productive as he usually is, there was the conversation of are they doing enough with him? Are they trying to scheme him open in certain situations where he's getting bracketed? And there's a lot of attention on him. But, of course, with all that attention with him, T. Higgins got opportunities to just win simple one-on-one matchups with not very creative concepts or anything like that. Now, T. Higgins, there's a lot of stress and pressure on him to carry the offensive load because I think Higgins does have a vertical aspect to his game. Like we saw in the beginning of the game when he was clearly interfered with and held like 15 yards down the field, like that was a potentially big play that they missed out on. And then he ended up getting a a big play late in the game when he just mossed that cornerback. So there are vertical aspects to his game, but there were times in this game where he just wasn't separating as well as he should have. And maybe that falls on them not doing enough to put him in the right situations to get open because they need him to get open. If, if not him, you're right. Tyler Boyd, it, like when there's not that, that threat to, you know, occupy the safety and everyone can kind of just condense the middle yeah. of the field that Boyd is not going, going to thrive that much in there. So everything needs to be enhanced now with chased out of the field because you're right. Yeah. There isn't, there isn't that easy speedster that just takes attention away. Look, let I me, mean, let me, let me, yeah. let me give you a QB coach perspective here. Cause it's really important. A hip takes, about three months to fully heal. And then about six to nine months before the player can be up and up and at them again, which means we'll be lucky if Jamar is back at the beginning of next year, okay? A hip, a hip, br- broken hip is, is serious, like ACL. It's a very serious thing. That's what's but, confusing. They say it's a broken hip, and then they say it's... No it's one ever said hip. it was a broken hip. Then There's they been said so much misinformation hair. in the no, last John, three minutes. They said it was a hair fracture. I mean, I've That's broken, broken a lot of That is a broken hip. A hair, a fra- when, a fracture and broken I feel like a football is the same thing. Should, yeah. thing is, people imagine broken to be something broken in half, but a right. fracture is a break. So anyways, my point is what? My point is, if you were talking about the normal quarterback, if you even if you're talking about like an Andy Dalton type person, this would be tremendously awful. But we all knew from the beginning, and we, this is why we said maybe don't even take Jamar Chase, you know? We all knew from the beginning that Burrow can make anybody work. The man is brilliant at his best. Listen, here's the thing Bengals fans don't want to talk about. He has not been at his best. Okay, you know, no okay. one wants to... Hold on. I need to... No, sorry, hold on. Stop, stop, stop. stop. No one wants to blame Burrow. And I don't want... I love Burrow. I'm his biggest fan. But if you watched Burrow during that Browns game, and you watched him in the first five minutes when he was on, and then you watch him in, let's say, the middle five minutes when he's off... Yeah. You can see the difference. He is an I mean, on and off. Here's the he thing. A, he on, wasn't... Hold on, hold on. I'm not done. I'm almost done. I'm not done. He is an on and off kind of guy. No. And he's on when, when you're close, when games are close. He's on. No. And he's on in the playoffs. But he was off. And he's been off a number of games. If you can turn when... Burrow on. Hold on. Time out. Almost done. If you can turn Burrow on, you're going to be able to outscore the opponent, okay. even with a weak secondary. Here's and I question. think that's what Zach Taylor has planned. But and that, that, my friends... Is your your okay, yeah. here's the thing, John. What Just I'm on saying, his toes there. John, all I'm saying, I'm not saying, obviously, we can't add a, a guy of Chase's caliber or anything near that. I don't even think we can add a starting receiver. But what do you think of adding just a pure a speed guy? A guy, you know, I guess Will Fuller is retired. You can't add anybody now. I also John. think what, John. How can you add anyone? It, isn't the trade, it, isn't it over? No, you can add. The trade deadline's over. But I want to also ask, because for me, the Chase injury feels more worrisome. Not because we don't. We have Higgins. We have Boyd. We have Hurst. What makes me concerned is that I haven't seen as much production from our running game, which feels like we need to be able to, for all the reasons you know you need to get an air game, our run game has been making me a little bit yeah. nervous. That's what I wanted to talk about next, John, is our good friend Zim, Zim, Zim. Uday. Zim, friend of the show. Saying, he was saying the way the game was going and the ki- type of defenses they were facing, they should have been running the ball. They should have been attacking, right, with the run game. They can't run the and ball. The Bengals cannot run the ball. Well, I, do, I disagree. I think they can run with Pirine. No, I think they cannot. Pirine, I think, John. I think they're not. They can't even. The Bengals can't even be guaranteed to get one yard running when they need it. The Bengals are not a running team. John, John. At least from the Bengals' perspective, they they are not a team where the more you run it, the more successful it is. If it isn't already successful in the beginning, it's much like the whole composition of their team. I think most people knew. 
by the end of the second quarter, this game was probably not going to go their way. There wasn't a lot that they could do to counter out what the Browns were doing, and it just didn't seem like they were capable of putting up a good showing. And with the run game, it just never really got going from the start, and I don't think running into a brick wall 30 more times would have done anything more positive. And I get it when your pass rush is definitely not doing, or when your pass blocking is not doing particularly well when you're down to the game script and opposing teams are just kind of teeing off on you at that point. It makes things tough, but if you can't run the ball in the first place, running more isn't going to make it better. No, I mean, uh, yeah, okay. Well, let us move on to the defense because... Well, just to finish on that point about the offense, what what John what what Hoji was saying about Burrow, I feel like with Burrow, John, I feel like there's two modes for Burrow. One is I'm going to be a normal quarterback. I'm going to you know play what's you know what's in front of me. I'm going to play within the system. And then there's Burrow, the superhero. There's Burrow rolling around, running around. Right? Are you literally going to just take exactly what I said and say it again in different words? Yes. But I feel like I feel like there's something there are certain games and there's something about Cleveland. I don't know if it's the pressure, I don't know what it is of playing for the team he loves. He he just kind of ten, tenses up a little bit. And I feel like when, when Hoji's saying that we saw a different kind of borough late in the game, well, I mean, the pressure was off, right? I mean the game was out of hand. You know, it was a it was a blowout and this was garbage time and all that. And so he kind of relaxed and played like the, the, the borough that we see. You know when he's at his best. I I don't think that I don't think it's about his accuracy or I don't think it's about his ability to read the defense. I actually I think it's about his his approach. You know Baker Mayfield said that I woke up feeling dangerous. I think that actually applies to Joe Burrow. Yeah. Some days he feels like I'm going to go out there and I'm going to make it happen. Well, let me tell and you what it is. Days, yeah, yeah, because I'm a QB coach. I can tell you exactly what oh, this okay. is. Oh, okay, okay, great. So. So basically, do you remember when Quentin Tarantino won the Oscar for Best Writer? And he was like a, it was a very young writer and it was for, it was for, um, it was for Pulp Fiction. And everybody, and, and a few people said, one of the curses that could happen to a, a writer-director is for them to win the Oscar too early. And you might be like, well, what does that mean? One of the things that could happen for a, a, anybody is to get kudos too early in your career, where you feel pressured to live up to those kudos. And what happened to Joe Burrow was that tremendous year coming back from the injury where he, he basically goes straight to the Super Bowl, goes through, basically goes through the NFL the way, you know, beans go through your system, Daddy. And, and, and ends up with, this, with all this new fan base. And now this year, the pressure is on him to always be great. Whereas last year, the, the pressure wasn't on him always to be great. People didn't expect that from him. And guess what? Yeah. He was loose. He was foot loose. He was fancy free. And that's when he yeah. does well. What he needs, honestly, what this team needs is a good therapist, psychologist to work this out of him. What he has They're to stop doing They're not going to give you a job. They're is, not going to give you a job. Well, but why not? John. They, they gave John. Cowherd the job. John, I guess, okay, I guess, okay, to make this into a question for John, I was saying I think they need a speedster just to take just to draw a little attention. And, and you know, I know like John Ross didn't have great hands, he didn't have great concentration, didn't have great whatever. But he did to some degree get attention from defenses, right? Because I mean, if you leave him wide, wide open, which he with his speed, he can get wide, wide open pretty easily, you're gonna get burned. I mean, he will catch the ball if it's, you know. Yeah, but then he gets hit once he gets hurt. Remember how small he no, was? No, but my point is, John, my point is a, a guy who's a speed they have to respect, would that change the offense? Or do – yeah, go ahead. Yeah, it would because that's the that's one of the main values that Chase has. I don't understand why after every time that this team loses, there has to be a think piece behind it. Why can't they just play bad because of injuries? Like why why does that be anything more than that? Well, because John, they, they what do John? John, 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 Twitter, John. John. It has to be a think piece. This jo- is what John, we all just sit John, and here and do. I, we have nothing better. Question, to do. question for you, John. You, of all the injuries, of all the injuries, which one is the worst for the Cincinnati Bengals? I say DJ Reader. What do you say? I mean, it's three of the five worst possible injuries right now it's chase it's cheeto i mean reader is probably the best player at his position compared to all three of those guys but even still like they've been somewhat successful in just plugging holes in the middle but not having your best receiver that changes the game the most not having your best cornerback that changes things dramatically 
Yeah. It does. It does. But also not having Burrow be 100% mentally, which I think is something that people aren't willing I to I think talk he about. looked at his very best against the Falcons. Dude, you he know, was I, fine in the first drive. The, t- the pass got tipped yeah. at the line to get a turnover, and yeah. then things kind of unfolded from there. But why did things unfold? Because he unfolded. No. He was not himself after that drive. That's what I'm saying. He was I really not himself. I think the defense... I mean, I look, look. I think that the defense could only hold for so long, and the game kind of got out of hand. And okay, so what about the Panthers? What do you think is going to happen? Yeah, good question. So about the Panthers, John, I am very intrigued by this P.J. Walker guy. Same. And you look here. This was the fourth quarter. Whoa. You know, look at that. That is, quite, can... a v- that is quite a velocity. Yeah, velocity, is splitting the defenders, right? And then we have very late in the fourth quarter – he, he is like, minute 45 left. They're driving fourth and 17. Look at the wow. clutchness. Look, Look at the at velocity. Look at that velocity. Look at, and the guy drops the ball. But the guy, was was his name, John? DJ Moore or something? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Damn and me. then that same receiver is on the receiving end of this very exciting play to that should have ended the game. Wow. Look at that but, mobility. Yeah, and then why, look at that. Why, look at that. why would you what ever... Is it, like 60, 70 yards down the field? Wowzers. Like perfect. Yeah. Wowzers. So, so this guy... Why would you ever he, start you know, anybody else over this guy? This well, guy I mean, should this guy's only like six feet tall. Baker Mayfield. And, you know, Baker Mayfield. So is Baker. Baker. Yeah, that's true. But I mean, it's draftism. But I mean, look, he's getting his chance now. He's getting his chance now. Why? And I'm worried now. He I'm worried. He's I mean, playing we, like he has nothing to lose. That's, we that's have, you know, that idea. We have a weak secondary, and that's a big problem. Wait. And a so you just the, said we, we have a great secondary. We don't need to worry about a secondary. Well, that was in the beginning of the show. <laughs> I got it. But so the backups playing with nothing to lose is also, God, that's not a good angle for my chin. Um, it's a great one. It's fine. <laughs> that's why I got the turtle one. Uh, the backups who play with nothing to lose is also something that makes me nervous. Cooper Rush, uh, Trubisky. Trubisky's not really a backup, just not that good. But these guys who come out lights out because yeah. people have really low expectations of them, they make me nervous against our team. And I don't know if that's because we go in with a mindset that, like, this is going to be an easier play. We don't have to worry about that. But we have a tendency to get taken by yep. backup QBs. Well, l- yep. like John said when I brought this up to him last week, you know, the Bengals can't take anybody like that anymore. They're four and four. They have they have a, a, a bad secondary now. I mean, yeah. look, let us Big give problem. Von Bell his 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 his, his uh, appreciation. No, Von Bell, I was saying. Yeah, Von Bell, obviously. No, give him his flowers, not Trey Flowers. Oh, give, give him his flowers. And so he, he that was his fourth mm-hmm. interception. Pretty and easy interception. It was yeah. like Jesse Bates right played well in this game, too. Yeah, but he also had this beautiful, beautiful, look at this. Look at it, get right there. A hungry, hungry. The they, they're doing hungry, hungry hippo. That's what that's yeah. called in football terms. So, so Von Bell has been on fire. He yeah. has obviously earned his next contract. And... Uh, Jesse Bates had a very good game. So our safety situation is good. Dax Hill, I think he is on the team. And the second, the, the, the corners, though, they are very vulnerable. And our pass rush, John, I mean, Trey Hendrickson is kind of not that healthy. So, yeah, we, we are going to give up a lot of yards from here I on was, out. I will say this. With, when it comes to Walker, in these past three weeks, he, I think, is one of the top quarterbacks in just – average depth of target so he's just flinging the ball down there and he's creating explosive plays out of it i think he leads uh pro, fo- pro football focuses big time throw metric in the last three weeks of like 10 or something like that so he is just letting it loose and good things are happening down the field but good things aren't happening all the time like the panthers passing offense itself is still bottom of the league in success rate in the games that walker has started so it's not been a consistent offense by any means but he's definitely been a spark plug so i think the only way to beat him or to stop him is to just not let anything go past you like just basically play as soft as you can make pj walker construct these long methodical drives where everything is in front of you and that's just the most simplistic way i think that this can work with the secondary that they have yeah. i think john i think on our side though 
I think we have to keep the chains moving. No, we wait, have no, no, to get, no, 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 no. We no. have to move on from the explosive play No idea, more chains. And no. we have to use Joe Burrow as no our running chains. back. He needs to pick no up. No chains. No. We got to do the big plays. We have to be scoring no. seven points every seven minutes. Listen, the only way you're going to win in this NFL, you got to remember back to when the Bengals were good, which was last year. Outscore your opponent. You okay. can't be moving the chains. You can't try to win the, the, the possession the time clock. That's what they tried with against the Browns. You have to score and score and score again. You have to take those long shots. The Bengals have to play like they got nothing to lose. That's the only way that Joe Burrow's going to win. So okay. I uh, there's a man with a briefcase. Uh, I don't know what that means, but man with a I briefcase. Think that's, that's your cue. That's I, I got to go. Not saying what I'm doing. Not saying who I'm talking to. But uh, I gotta, I gotta jump, and I'm gonna hope the Bengals pull it out on Sunday. But at this point, prediction. I'm just gonna enjoy a football game. Prediction. I don't, I, I don't have one. I don't have one. Oh, you're usually not allowed to do that, but uh, that's fine. Yeah. At this juncture, I can do what I need to do. But all right, y'all. That's I'll pretty see you cool. Next week. That's pretty cool. That is cool. Yeah. Well, I mean, she's doing a great Agent job. H and Jankers, obviously. Yeah. Obviously, keeping DNH Sports running with her work over there. But, John, yeah, let us get your prediction. Oh, boy. I don't know, man. At this point, you can't really rely on the Bengals' offense to be good right now without Jamar Chase until they prove it. I don't think the Panthers' defense is necessarily a juggernaut by any means. I think their pass rush is a little bit worse than what Cleveland has to offer. Brian Burns is pretty good, but he was almost traded and... I don't think he's necessarily Miles Garrett, so maybe John Williams will have somewhat of a bounce back game. He was in that same draft class, 2019. I think the offense line will play fine. I think Burrow will play okay. It's just a matter of how much they can stretch the field with the receivers that they have right now. So I don't expect them to score a ton of points, but I also don't expect the Panthers to necessarily put up 30 like the Browns just did. I think it'll be close. I think it'll be be a game in like the low 20s. I'm going to say the Bengals. I'm going to say they win 22 to 20. Like it. Like it. Now, my turn. So, first of all, I think that this game, I think that everything that has happened so far is irrelevant. The Jamar Chase uh, injury, all of that stuff. What really matters is Joe Burrow. He is the backbone, the hip bone, the knee bone, everything. The brain bone of this team. And I believe that if Joe Burrow can elevate, and he will elevate because he's in doubt, because people are doubting him. And that's what he loves. He thrives when people doubt him. I believe he, this is the game when you're going to see him come back. This is Joe Burrow's swan song. This is his return. And in fact, I would like for everybody in the comments, please, what do you think? Is Joe Burrow to blame? Is he going to get better? Talk about Joe Burrow in the comments. Do you blame him at all for what's gone wrong? And do you think he's going to make it right? And I'm not done. I'm not done. But I believe that this is going to be that wacky game where the Bengals pick it up. And they're going to outscore their opponent 41 to 19. And by the way, Dadio, you have not been pointing out when our predictions are right. But on the last show, I said that the Chubbs and the Browns were going to surprise everyone against the Bengals. And I was right. 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 That's true. That's true. And there you can see the stats from the game. Obviously, Joe Burrow's two touchdown passes in the fourth quarter were not enough. Meaningless. But... Meaningless. Well, I, you, I mean, those, those two were, were only to save some face. Yeah. Well, you talk about believing, Hoji, and uh, obviously there are many different beliefs out there. People yeah. spell believe in different ways. One way is no. B-L-E-A-V, and that is where our podcast is hosted. Like my shirt. And so you can obviously subscribe to our podcast there, and you can support us on Patreon and... Yeah. You can tell your friends about us anywhere. And your enemies. That. And your enemies. Yeah. Probably Do they realize they spell believe wrong? Well, no. Do they know that? It's no. copyright issues, John. It's a workaround. Mm. But here's the thing. I would say this, and, and, and obviously you're going to think, wow, that is uncharacteristic of you. Yeah. I think the Bengals are going to get a smacked. I think oh, they're no. going to get a smacked. Yeah. They're going to get smacked on Sunday. No one likes and a smack. No. No, no. Who wants to get smacked? Not me. But sometimes good things come out of a snacks. Did I say a snack or a smack? You have now said Anyways. Both. <laughs> so. <laughs> so anyways, 
I think they're going to get a smack. Snack. And, and John. Yeah. They're going to smack a snack. Yeah. John. They're going to get what smacked. What I was trying to tell John before yeah. was that I think that what Hoji hates, the dink and dunk, he hated Hate to see it with Dalton. Everybody no hates it, but I think that's the key, John. And not quite a Dalton dink and dunk, where it's the running backs. I think it's going to be two tight ends. I think it's going to be two receivers you don't expect. I think he's going to get those little, you know, short post route type, you know, things or the drags. And the, he's going to have to go for those seven, eight yard gains to people who we don't know. I think that's going to be what the offense, how it stays afloat. And I think the final score is going to be 27 to 20 Cincinnati. Wait a, minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. You said they're getting smacked. So where's the smack come in? I just explained it. When, when a child is born, brought into this world, yeah. they have to smack the his bottom. And that is its initiation to its new birth. It is a rebirth for the Cincinnati Bengals offense. It's going to okay. be a new offense. Okay, so they're going to get gonna smacked be, on the butt, yeah, proverbially. The butt, proverbially. Yes. So they can breathe. As a rebirth, as a yes. rebirth, kind of like a baptism in smackiness. Right. Exactly. That wasn't clear. Okay. Okay. I'll try to be more clear next time. And John, Poor if, that is, if that is all that you have, John, then subscribe, smash the like. Right. Give me a Carolina and rapper in case they win. I'll try to emulate. Oh, wow. There we go. Read John's articles on CincyJungle.com. Follow him on Twitter so long as it's free. And obviously, you can subscribe to our podcast, number one biggest yeah. podcast. Go to our YouTube channel. And give us some money on Patreon.com slash DH Sports. Who else is still covering the Bengals out there? Honestly, nobody. Just us. We'll see you next time. So long. It's sweet, sweet, sweet pie. Yeah. Sweet pie. I say bye to my sweet pie. Sweetie pie, sweetie pie, gonna say goodbye to my sweetie pie, yeah!